Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Kendall. Today, uh, fountain pen cleaning tips. Some things that you should consider, some things that you should maybe avoid. Uh, and uh, wanted to show this off here. Old syringe, but it opens. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about this. So I've got eight tips for today. And let's uh, flip the camera and dive in. Okay, so um, tip number one, uh, most people have heard using a fountain pen uh, using a bulb syringe. It's a great tip. Uh, however, something to add here is there are better ways to use this than others. And I found this out the hard way. Um, you can see this uh, feature here. So you are going to have better luck if you use it this way versus just grabbing it and squeezing it. Uh, me being fairly new to the hobby, I didn't know that. And so I would use it this way, but not always. And various hand positions, uh, just grabbing it. And you can see how it would buckle there. So I've had this since uh, uh, less than a year, probably 10 months, uh, maybe even nine months. So um, I have purchased a new one. We'll see how this one holds up. It doesn't have the same kind of seam, uh, and I, I think it's still best to use it in this way, but this will be more forgiving with you know different angles if you're trying to get pressure there. Um, now, there are, there are uh, bulb syringes that come apart on purpose and so that you can clean them because they can get moldy inside. Uh, but I've also heard some of the reviews on those that they're difficult, you know, if, if you're using them, they'll come apart while you're trying to use them. So for me, I think this will work well and, you know, if I'm afraid of mold growth, you can use white vinegar uh, to, to clean that out and just dry and it'll be fine. So, uh, bulb syringe. Another interesting thing with the bulb syringe is a story, uh, I've, I've heard a few different places of, of people cleaning their pen, but as they're, as they're cleaning it, the, they weren't holding the nib in place and they had a nice expensive nib go flying across the room or go down a drain. So, um, that's something to think about as well. So just as a, as a visual here. So yeah, if you've got your, your setup like this, you put it in. Yeah, if you're not holding this in place, and uh, typically I don't need to worry too much with, with these kinds of nibs. Uh, but if you had a nib that could come off, that would be a concern, uh, especially if it's a gold nib that's worth a lot. So. Uh, okay, let's move on to tip number two, which is a blunt syringe. Um, I'm a big fan of these. They come in handy for a lot of reasons. And, uh, you know, probably the main use that, that I use them for is to clean out the, uh, you know, a cartridge converter like this. You can just blast it in there and clean it out very easily. Um, it's helpful for various things like that. It's also good to use up little pieces of ink that are left that are hard to get to. Uh, and uh, another thing to keep in mind is, is filling your pen. Uh, if you're just dipping it in the bottle, uh, I don't know. There is something to be concerned about with transferring anything that's on the, uh, on the pen into the bottle of ink and maybe contaminating the whole bottle. So I've also heard people using uh, a blunt syringe like this to, you know, it's easier to sanitize a, a small surface like this. And so that's, a, that's an idea as well, but big fan of the blunt syringe. Um, tip number three is pen flush. This is a uh, one that Goulet sells. I don't use it often, but, but sometimes uh, it can come in handy. And Goulet is a great resource. They have great videos on how to use this. So if you have some stubborn ink that doesn't want to come out, this would be a good choice. Uh, luckily, I haven't had to use it too much. Uh, and tip number four, 
this is uh, this is more just a general starting out uh, in fountain pens. I would recommend going with cartridge converter pens. They're just easier to clean. They're easier to maintain. So you don't have the moving parts that a vac filler or a piston filler would. So um, anyway, that's that's my tip number four is cartridge converter pens. I actually really like cartridge converter pens for a lot of reasons, and uh, one of those is just how easy they are to maintain. Uh, okay, and tip number five, avoid pens that have a fixed nib and feed. So if you can't take these out, it's hard to get a really good clean sometimes. Uh, and I do have a few pens that have, uh, they're basically glued in and I would not recommend those. So something to keep an eye out for. Uh, so we're, we're burning through these pretty quick. Here's uh, tip number six, uh, shimmer inks. I would dedicate a pen to those. Uh, I, I think uh, for the most part, it's okay if you had say a, a shimmer ink with maybe gold shimmer and then you're switching to a silver shimmer and you get a few gold specks come through. I don't think that's as big a deal, but if you're if you're wanting to go from a shimmer ink to a standard, uh, more professional looking ink or something like that, and then you have random glitter that comes through. Um, that's just a pet peeve of mine. So uh, I would recommend dedicating pens for an ink like that. Uh, and similarly, I would recommend dedicating uh, maybe a permanent inks if you're doing that to a, to a specific pen. So uh, tip number seven, uh, this is consider the, uh, the temperature of your water. Uh, this is a topic that I just kind of caught my interest. So I, I did actually uh, poll some people on Facebook in the Goulet uh, Facebook group, Goulet Nation. Just wanted to get some information and uh, I would be curious. Leave a comment below if you, you know, use hot versus cold. So uh, some things to consider with hot water is that you could have I mean, in theory, your water heater tank can uh, break down slowly over time. And so you can have increased mineral content. So using hot water, I mean, you could have more minerals. That's one idea. Uh, another idea is that you could have, you know, the high heat could actually expand a material and, you know, maybe cause damage that way. Uh, the most common though, the, the last one I'll bring up on this, and the most common I've heard is that the, the heat of the water can soften glues or wash away like silicone grease or lubricants. So actually there were people that said that, you know, the, uh, the, the silicone grease uh, was something they had to keep applying. And then once they switched to cold water, they, they didn't have that issue anymore. So in effect, the hot water was melting away the the lubricants. So something to keep in mind. Uh, and then number eight, this is my final tip. And this is consider whether you might need distilled water. And I, I think for most people, you're not going to need that. The, you know, just a tap water should be fine. Uh, I live in Utah. There is a lot of minerals in the water here. I, I haven't had any issues, but um, there are folks that you know, they, they have well water or they're in a scenario where they, they have a lot of minerals and you, you know, some, some folks I've heard, so they, they start out with tap water, do the general cleaning, and then they'll just do a final, you know, flush or rinse with mineral water or sorry, with uh, distilled water. So, um, anyway, those are my tips. So, um, if I miss something, let me know but I will switch the camera around and close this out. Okay, hopefully uh, those tips are helpful. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if this was useful and if I missed something. So what tips 
do you have, things to avoid, things to consider. Uh, I'd be interested to know if, uh, you know, we didn't cover ultrasonic cleaners. So, um, you know, I haven't gone down that road. So if you have information on that or when is it worthwhile. Uh, also, if you have any fun stories, uh, have you launched a nib across the room or down a drain? things like that. Have you had issues with mineral uh, buildup? Um, just anything like that. And I would love to hear from those. So uh, please uh, like this video. That would help me very much. And uh, consider subscribing so you can uh, follow for more of these. All right. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.